When we talk about Pinagsamahan, we mean more than just a recounting of dates and places. We are talking about a shared history. The story of San Miguel Corporation is a story it shares with the Filipino people. It's a history that we often see but do not notice. So where do we look first? I'm on J.P. Laurel Street, formerly Calzada de Malacanang. So where on earth is the San Miguel building? My grandfather's grandfather would have walked past the summer home of the Spanish governor's general to go to church a church dedicated to San Miguel Arcangel. One of my professors said that one of the best ways to learn about history is to read data of tombstones. So in many old churches in the Philippines, I often look at the sides to see who's buried there. And in San Miguel Church, we found a discovery, which is this. The founder of San Miguel, Enrique M. Barreto. Enrique Maria Barreto de Icasa was a well-known businessman, owner of a photo studio that captured Manila's finest in their Sunday best. Just paces away from his home, Barreto established the first San Miguel brewery, La Fábrica de Cerveza de San Miguel. The brewery was scheduled to open on September 29, the Feast of San Miguel Arcangel. But like many things in the Philippines, the weather intervened, a storm came, and they had to open on October 4 with no less than the Archbishop of Manila blessing the new brewery. Of course, he had a little help from his friends. Barreto got Pedro Pablo Rojas to manage the enterprise. P.P. Rojas immediately adopted the latest European standards in the brewing of beer. He hired a brewmaster from Germany, Ludwig Kaine, to ensure that the brew was world class. Even more, Enrique Barreto and P.P. Rojas made sure that the brewery used the most modern technologies in brewing and refrigeration of its time. San Miguel was Southeast Asia's first brewery, and by 1891, barely a year from its foundation, was exporting beer. Cerveza de San Miguel was Manila's pride, and perhaps later on, the pride of the Pacific. From Hula to Honolulu, the world enjoys the outstanding flavor of San Miguel beer. However, Enrique Barreto and Pipi Rojas didn't stay long enough to see their company expand from just a brewery. San Miguel by then was dominating the beer market, exporting cerveza to Hong Kong, Shanghai, Guam, and Honolulu. By 1912, an entirely new set of leaders had taken over and they not only wanted to expand, but in fact, needed to. Breweries need ice, and beers need bottling. So by 1919, San Miguel acquired the Oriental Brewery and Ice Company, the first step into a wider food and beverage business. One of San Miguel's neighbors was an ice cream plant that manufactured confections conjured by a U.S. Army volunteer cook under the brand of Magnolia. San Miguel purchased the Magnolia ice cream plant, relocating it to Echagüe Street, expanding the product line to include milk and cottage cheese. The Magnolia plant was open to the public, a showcase of the state-of-the-art sanitary manufacturing techniques employed by the company. No dirty ice cream here. In the 1920s, prohibition halted the sale of beer and alcoholic beverages in the mainland United States. While the ban did not extend to the Philippines, the company began to explore other options, like carbonated drinks. Royal True Orange, which San Miguel started bottling in 1922, was described as the result of a strictly hygienic manufacturing process operating out of the newly purchased facility in General Solano Street. It was a success. A big one, 
until this. Enjoy the pause that refreshes with Coca-Cola, a refreshing drink of highest quality. San Miguel was the first bottler of Coca-Cola outside the mainland United States. The first bottles of San Miguel were ceramic. After shifting to glass bottles in 1938, the company went into the packaging business. Without bottles at ready disposal, neither San Miguel nor Coke would be easily available in the Philippines. By 1940, San Miguel was conducting operations in the U.S., operating a small brewery in Texas. It also was managing cold storage operations in Calcutta and Singapore. But then, back home. San Miguel was seized by the Japanese Imperial Army. The invaders made their own beer to supplement their own stocks imported from Manchuria. At this turbulent time, a new leader was needed. During the war, Andres Soriano was asked by President Manuel Quezon to be his Secretary of Finance, Agriculture, and Commerce. Even with his cabinet post, Soriano enlisted with the armed forces when they took back the Philippines. For his service in the battlefield, Soriano earned himself a promotion. From then on, Andres Soriano would be known as the Colonel. The war would soon be over, but San Miguel's biggest battle still lay ahead. April 1945. The Philippine capital lay in ruins. Among the industrial casualties of war were San Miguel's Royal True Orange Plant, the Magnolia Dairy Products Plant, the Cold Storage Plant. Soriano led the company in rebuilding ruined infrastructure and business, a key decision being the acquisition of the Japanese-owned Balintawak Beer Company in Polo. Its facilities were upgraded, and soon the plant's brewing kettles were finally producing quality Philippine beer, San Miguel Beer. The country and the company embarked on rebuilding from the ruins. San Miguel seized the opportunity to acquire more facilities to venture into other industries, becoming even more woven into the fabric of the Filipinos' everyday life. Pag tayo nasa bahay, ugali na natin na mag-San Miguel Beer. Okay talaga San Miguel Beer. Kahit nag-iisa, o may barkada, o mag-San Miguel Beer tayo. Kumusta kayong dalawa? Enjoy ba naman kayo? The best talaga San Miguel Beer, ano? Para, oh, nice. baka may kailangan kayo. Pili at home, Jimmy, ha? Kaya lagi mag-stack ng San Miguel Beer sa bahay. Bert, sabi ng mismo, umuwi na raw kayo. Ang sabi ko, laging mag-stack ng San Miguel Beer sa bahay. Sinabi ko bang bahay ko rin? As in the past, the strategic acquisitions of San Miguel built upon its core businesses, each industry helping the other. The company started to invest in lumber for the manufacturing of cases and soon was producing textiles and steel drums. It went into agribusiness with the byproducts of the brewery providing ideal raw material for livestock feeds. Soon enough, San Miguel had its own newspaper, the Philippine Herald, and a radio television station, the Inter-Island Broadcasting Corporation. San Miguel, that began with beer as its sole product, with a capital of 180,000 pesos in 1890, is set to earn over a trillion pesos over the next few years. San Miguel today is one of the largest conglomerates in the Philippines, producing oil and petrochemicals and power to building airports and tollways. The story that began in the Fabrica de Cerveza de San Miguel leads us to this. Skyway Stage 3. The history of San Miguel is intertwined with the narrative of nation. San Miguel today begins a new chapter beyond beer, beyond food and drink, into highways, into new worlds. Yet it remains true to the pioneering 19th century company, now part of Filipino identity. Sama, sama, sama.